if there seems to be hostility or unwillingness, be attuned to that and make changes as necessary. Be sure that the care is coordinated to lessen fatigue, both mental and physical, for both the person you're caring for and for yourself. You need recreation and rehabilitation also because the chore that you have taken on is a very large and awesome task. And finally, you as the primary caregiver need to observe for any complications and be sure that these are reported to a physician. Now let's discuss how the in-home care provider can promote self-care for the patient. And that is something we are talking about, self-care. People do not readily accept being invalids or incapacitated. It makes them feel childish. It affects their self-worth. Although you may feel as though you're helping by doing everything for the person you're caring for, you are only doing them a disservice. Your first duty is to protect their rights, and the right that is most often violated during the rehabilitative restorative phase is that of privacy. Privacy in regards to financial affairs. Privacy in regards to mail that might be coming or other communication and phone calls. If someone is receiving mail, be sure that you open it in front of them rather than open it ahead of time and give it to them once you have sorted through it. This gives them a feeling of control over the communication that is coming into the home. Do the same for phone messages. Even if a telemarketer should call, be sure that you do take down the number and share it with the person you're caring for. After all, it is their home and it is their decision whether they wish to talk to the individual. You also need to ensure safety. Patients that have had some areas of brain injury may lack the ability to judge things accurately. As a result, they are very prone to hazards, particularly slips and falls. So you need to preserve safety in the environment. And we have discussed some of the alterations to be made in the home in order to maintain that safety. Ensure therapeutic communication, not gossip, particularly in the presence of the person for whom you are giving care. Remember, just because someone may not be able to speak does not mean they are unable to hear. And just because they have difficulty hearing doesn't mean that they are unable to respond appropriately. Adhere to the legal and ethical principles that we have discussed earlier in terms of theft and abuse issues. Follow the instructions of physicians, therapists, pharmacists, and other members of the team. You need to then implement rehabilitative measures as ordered. These might include assistance with mobility. And we have already discussed some of the assistance that you can give when someone is unable to move independently. Assistance with meals, bathing, dressing, and hygiene. So important to maintain an individual's self-esteem and assistance in movement of their joints and muscles, which is also called range of motion. Encourage independence. Be sure that you praise progress and set limits. Set limits on yourself and set limits on the individual. No one can spend all day working hard. Each of us needs time to relax and laugh and enjoy the companionship of others. Provide emotional support and reassurance. And lastly, 
learn to use all equipment knowledgeably. And one of the things that you...